Greetings and welcome back to A House of Many Doors. I'm Catherine of Skye and we find ourselves in Clayton's Mill and hopefully we can figure out what the heck happened and why our memories were stolen from us. Partly a town and partly a fortress and partly one vast tavern, a creaking wooden monument built in defiance of the truism that crime doesn't pay. A shanty village mostly composed of rutting, rusting kinetopedes converted into houses or brothels surrounds the great building at the center of the room. Lopsided and absurd, Clayton's mill is huger than a cathedral, belching smoke and spinning a dozen blades. It bristles like a porcupine with heavy-duty artillery though you suspect that any one of these great cannons going off would cause the whole edifice to collapse. The journey to Clayton's Mill is a pilgrimage for thieves, pirates, and bandits. Here they can sell their misbegotten wares in the open. They can also drink and fight and kill each other without comment or consequence. In the mill itself, liquor flows eternal, though Clayton Canker himself is rarely seen in public these days. Um... Okay, we have a lot of options. Memory Thieves, we're heading here. Repair your hull, gather news, ingratiate yourself. Uh, let's go with our quest first. Clayton's Mill is usually a cacophony of shouts and raucous laughter and the occasional spirited evacuation of bodily fluids. But when you approach today, the windows are shuttered. Clayton Kanker himself is behind the bar, a giant upper half of a man teetering atop clunky mechanical legs. He rubs a glass with a rag and eyes you carefully, but your attention is occupied by the room's other occupant, a woman whose face is covered by bright, sharp steel. Catherine, she says coolly, please sit. I'll sit. Clayton clanks over, whistling from his pneumatic knees, and pours you a glass of beer-like liquid. Her iron beak is distinctive, and finally you recognize her. Lady Stymphalian, a noblewoman from the City of Masks. You'd expect to meet her at a high society ball, not seated behind a horribly stained table in Clayton's mill. I did not expect my men to survive, in truth, she says. I'm grateful to be proved wrong. Thank you for showing them mercy. She retrieves a box from beneath the table. Consider this my apology, she says. The real memory we stole from you. A harmless little echo. As so we gained one box of happy memories. Um, yeah, why did you send your men to steal my memory? We didn't care about which memory we stole, she says. We switched the memory boxes, you see. The memory you reclaimed was not your own. That symbol, the one-eyed skull, what does it mean? It's an old symbol venerating one of the sanctioned gods, says Lady Stymphalian. Just a little mark of our sect. It's a nightmare trying to run a secret society when half your followers get the same bloody ink. Uh thing inked on their flesh, let me tell you. How dare you send men to drill into my head? The steel hawk face is impassive. The razor-edged beak glints in the lamplight. Perhaps one day you will realize that we have offered you an opportunity, she says. I encourage you to grasp it. So I've got a new memory now. Clocks and red mountains. What does it mean? Why fill my head with all that? That memory has, well, the word infected is apt, but unnecessarily, unnecessarily negative, says Lady Stymphalian. It has altered you. We were blocked from you before, thanks to the machinations of your governor, but now we have a door into your head. You see, we are very interested in your search for an escape from the house, Catherine. Watch for us in your dreams. She stands and begins to put on her black laced gloves. I have explained as much as I care to. Understand that both of us are minor pieces in a very old game. Understand also that I have far less faith in you than my masters, and I believe things will end the same as always. Um, demand she tell you more. I have told you all I care to tell, she says. I, was, I would advise you that you don't start anything untoward. A pneumatic hiss. Clayton Kanker has casually set an enormous six-barreled shotgun up on the bar and is making only a cursory attempt to appear not to aim in your direction. Let's let her leave. She tosses a purse of coins on the table. You had only one path ahead of you before. Now you have a second, darker, less traveled. She nods to you and then to Clayton Kanker behind the bar. He nods back respectfully. 
I do not expect to meet you again, she tells you. Sweet dreams. Gained 100 gold, 10x apprehensions and concerns, concluded recollection. And with that, she leaves. Clayton Kanker shuffles from window to window, opening the shutters, and the clientele trickle back in one by one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. Maybe... Let's, let's gather news. People around here aren't terribly fond of answering questions. Bribery might help you avoid getting beaten up. Okay, let's do that. Rumors of more infiltrations by undercover governor's men. A bar employee was left disfigured after being hit by a thrown bottle. A shadowy figure was spotted, spotted digging up graves. Well, well. Grist from the mill. All right. Um, let's... We're at 134 of 150. Let's see how much it costs to repair our hull. Oh, I didn't. I must have been on the other page. Okay. Your engineers help with the repairs, hopefully speeding the process along. It's still an agonizing wait. You spent four days having your kinetopede fixed up. It's returned to you pristine. Um, let's ingratiate ourselves. Clayton Kanker and his clue would make, crew would make very useful friends. Clayton Kanker is nowhere to be found, but Too Clever by Half is running a poker game in the corner. You know that the Karchar is one of Clayton's closest advisors. This could be an opportunity. Too Clever by Half looks up at you as you approach and offers you the kind of grin only a shark can produce. Okay, we can cheat to win. We're at a slight advantage. Test of Guile, play without cheating. You are at a disadvantage. Play to lose. Everyone loves someone who loses at cards or don't join the game. Let's choose the advantage one. Everyone at the table is cheating, but you cheat better than they ever could. Your shoes are polished to a mirror shine reflected in the leather. One of your crew members subtly signals the other player's hands to you. No one suspects a thing. You whittle them down one by one until finally you take the pot in the middle. Most of the other players swear and curse and threaten to do horrible things to your mother, but too clever by half nods with grudging respect. Oh, we passed a guile challenge, gained 200 gold. Come back soon, too clever by half tells you. The others seem less eager. Okay, um, we are in an anxious sanity level. Um... This will cost 25 guineas and recover some of your sanity. Be careful. Drinking at the mill can be dicey, and you will need to remain watchful. A toss of the coin, this could go either way. Uh, let's try it. Why not? Just have a go. Try the options. Can I click this? Hello? Aha. A brief respite. You attract a few snarls and stares as you approach the bar, but there are no serious incidents. You befriend a mercenary captain, one of your true... One of your crew has an ethical debate with a drug smuggler, and you buy a whole, the whole bar a round of drinks to keep them sweet. When you finally stagger upstairs and collapse into one of the mill's flea-ridden beds, your sleep is peaceful and untroubled by nightmares. Only by itching and a rough-looking fellow who lingers a little too long by your room's open doorway. Um, you sit up in bed and show him your pistol, and he slinks away as though aggrieved by your mistrust. You passed a vigilance challenge. All right, good. Your sanity recovers slightly, which must be very slightly. You spend one day at Clayton's Mill, but you now have a splitting headache. But a jolly dime was had by all. Oh, no, it, okay, there it goes, the uh, completion. We have a steady sanity level. So no story remaining here. So let's see what else we can do. In our cargo, we have an empty memory box and a box of happy memories. Can I? No, I don't want to abandon the item. Inside the box are memories of genuine joy. Memories that would have been precious to their previous owner, but which are now lost to them. Well, that's kind of sad. Um, okay, we have 20 apprehensions. Here are concerns. Um, these are the quests, I think. Stories and experiences. Fragment of, of epiphany. And portentous scream. Yeah, I'm still freaked out about that dream. It's very funky. Um, information we have, current affairs, relationships. Okay, here's where we can see uh, what our relationship status is. Distinctions. These are our initial start points. Okay, kinetopede. Um, 
looks okay. These are the different sections of the thing. I wonder if these things can be upgraded. I'm really curious about that. All right, fuel stop. Um, let's see. I think we have, so basically we have 19 or 18 and a half things of fuel. So I could buy one. Is that one fuel? Yes, it is. It's one fuel for 32 gold. Wow, that's very expensive. Um, okay, the bar. Alcohol at the mill makes up in strength for what it lacks in everything else. We can get blinding hooch. Do we want any? I don't know. Pretty Hess. She sits in the corner with an untouched beer flanked by Karchar bodyguards. She bugs, buys and sells black market items on Clayton's behalf. Her nickname is Ironic. Interesting. Um, obscene booklet. Pretty Hess would wink at you if she had enough eyes. I don't want to buy an obscene booklet because that's going to anger um, the guy that I forgot his name right now. Um, which is butter. Genuine Mycena brainstem. My love. Fresh as a daisy. Uh, the one thing I don't know is can we like sell this at another place? Like, are we good? Can we trade goods basically? Let's buy one of these and we'll see. So that's going to be in my inventory. Okay. Uh, too clever by half. A grinning Karchar is a sharp, in a sharp custom made business suit. He's an information broker of sorts. The exact nature of his relationship with Clayton is ambiguous. So looks like we can sell things if we have these items. Scandalous gossip, seditious whispers, the sixfold prince pate, terrible secret, and dreadful machinations. But we can't, we have none of these things, I'm guessing. Uh, so we can't sell any. All right, I guess we leave. I, th I think we can go. We have enough fuel, we have stuff. So let's leave the city. Let's look at the map. Where do we want to go? So we can go to show Bradley a spectacular sight, or we could head back to the city of Keys. Uh, let's, oh, there's another site over here as well. Um, what about, let Sandy treat you to a meal. That's another option we've got. Anything else? Spectacular sight. I don't see anything around. So I think let's go and show Bradley a spectacular sight. Okay, go back. So we're gonna go left, uh, which is west. Uh, several screens and then we gotta go up. Uh, okay. I'm gonna turn off this heart light so we don't, because we have plenty of that looks dangerous. We have plenty of fuel at the moment and plenty of sanity. So I'm going to turn off the heart light just while we travel. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. I wonder if there's anything in here that we can kind of like pick up or visit. I don't see any way. I'm, I'm clicking on these things, but they're not doing much for me at the moment. I'm gonna check the map next screen. Oh my god, there's another thing there. Let's check the map real quick. We need to go one screen to the left and then two up. Okay, back. Uh, that looks big. I want to avoid that one. What does this say? Your navigator will sometimes update the map with nearby locations. This happens more often if you have a high insight stat. Uh, okay. That guy is a lot bigger than me. I don't want to fight him. Aha! We passed him by. Yes. Okay, let's go. We need to go north now. God. That's scary. I'm going to turn on my heart light again. It doesn't turn on right away, looks like it. It's got to charge up a bit. Cobb's Day, 12th of Brooch, 1823. I like that, that they're like custom name days, day names and, and month names. Very cool. Vex. We are in Vex. A pillar of charred flesh that was once a god looms on the horizon. 
Gouts of smoke hiss from its bleeding seams. The shuffling crowd on the beach are grey-faced addicts, drowning their minds in god smoke. Uh, will Vess, Vex impress Bradley? The burning god looms, a smoldering pillar surveying its domain. Cinders dance above tranquil black water. God smoke blooms and billows, a shifting black green violet shroud on the landscape. The air here is full of drugs, says Bradley disgustedly. Okay, we gained one breathtaking spectacle, minus one relationship with Bradley. Maybe somewhere less intoxicating. Okay. Let's see. Fill your empty memory box with exotic memories. That could be cool. You will lose one breathtaking spectacle and gain one box of exotic memories. Um, yeah, let's do that. Maybe we can sell it. You wake from your surgery with a new penny-sized hole in your skull. When you heft the sm memory box back into your cargo, it actually seems heavier. You have some. You have commodified thought. A test of vigilance. Gather God smoke. Careful. A single breath of God's God smoke can send a man into religious rapture for weeks. Toss of the coin. It could go either way. Uh, let's try this. The crowd silently part for you and shuffle back in place behind. They are so tightly packed together that the long-starved dead are standing with the living. You tighten the straps of your gas mask nervously and get to work coaxing the smoke into your bottles. No problems this time, thankfully. Nice, we passed the vigilance challenge. Gained 2x god smoke vials. Okay, hurry back. Great tendrils of smoke curl around your feet as though to pull you out to sea. All right, what else can we do here? So we have god smoke vial, two of them. Box of exotic memories, which is butter, and box of happy memories. Um, oh, I need to, to look at apprehensions when we get out of here. There are no shops nearby. Okay, so we're out of luck here. We got to leave. And um, you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll end the episode here. And in the next one, we will start off and try to get some of those apprehensions put to work. So thank you so very much for joining me. I'm Catherine of Sky. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time.